Francine, it looks like the man who lifted the lid on HSBC's Swiss tax scandal, Hervé Falciani, he alleges that management was aware of lax controls at its Swiss bank. Uh, Francine, great to see you this morning. As always, for our American audience who might not be as familiar with this story, sort of set the stage for us. What is HSBC saying about all this? Well, Olivia, so we spoke to the whistleblower of HSBC on Friday. We had a 50-minute conversation now in the U.S. last month because basically in 2007, he stole data from HSBC private bank in Switzerland. He gave it to authorities in France. That then got passed on to the U.K. But at the same time, the U.S. were also alerted about this data breach and potential accounts uh, that allegedly uh, were for tax evasion. So this kind of sets the scene. This was back in 2007, but then it was brought again to the forefront just a couple of weeks ago when the press poured over this data and indeed not only was it a breach but actually uh, the allegations that people were helped to, to evade taxes came to light. Now I spoke to him at length on Friday, Olivia, we talked about Swiss authorities, his day-to-day -day life, but what really jumped out at me was that he is saying, he told me that he can prove HSBC management knew of alleged tax abuses. Francie. I can prove, and uh, it has to be explained, you know, that uh, the top management uh, is aware and was aware of, um, of the problem that um, was, was faced by uh, Geneva and private bank generally. You know, I'm really surprised that the top management of HSBC are just pretending a lot of things, but not trying even to know uh, what it is about. They didn't even try to, to get uh, insights uh, that uh, of course they didn't they didn't got uh, they didn't get from uh, from their own way uh, to to receive information so I just want to clarify, because I did try to get out of him, and we're talking about legal issues. Uh, Falciani declined to identify any bank executives. He also declined to describe his evidence. He says he doesn't have anything signed by top management, but what he says is he can provide logical proof. Now, you ask me, what is logical proof? I don't know, but it could be something like in the way the accounts were set up or some kind of software. Uh, Francine, um, real basic question. Uh, did he tell you why he did this? Was this just basic moral umbrage at what HSBC was doing wrong? Well, it, it, so he's a very controversial figure. I did ask him that. Some people say that he stole this for money, something that he absolutely refuses. He says he just thought it wrong. He um, kind of put his hat on, on the moral compass that he has. I also asked him if he had more data to leak. He says there is more information, but he didn't want to dwell on it. Again, he doesn't really want the focus to be on what he can reveal further. He says he wants a dialogue um, between banks and also whistleblowers. Again, he is a controversial figure. Uh, Francine, I know this is a story that has uh, been across the front pages of newspapers all across Europe and in Asia, in fact, because, of course, uh, HSBC is such a presence in Asia. What is the bank actually saying about this? How is HSBC responding? Yes, yeah, so Olivia, we did contact HSBC, especially after these fresh allegations. They declined to comment on Falchani's latest allegations, but they referred um, us to the bank's earlier statements on the ICIJ. Now, this, I also uh, need to point out that this is one of, it's a huge topic here in the UK because of the election. In fact, in a full-page advertisement, shortly after the press disclosed this data, the HSBC CEO offered his sincerest apology for the Swiss private bank discrepancy and wrote uh, in that apology that the unit had been completely overhauled.